So what can we do when we start to fall out of love with the guitar? Now, I suspect for most people, it's because they get a little bit tired of the same old licks. There are only so many times you can play your favorite song before it starts to feel a bit stale. Probably the most common way people try to rekindle their passion for playing is by buying a new guitar, amp or stomp box. I've definitely been guilty of that. I doubt there's been a guitar player in the world who hasn't. The problem is, is that the passion is usually short-lived and we end up searching for the next guitar toy before we've even fully explored the last one that we bought. It can be very hard to find your way out of a rut, but I've got six tools for you and the good news is they're all free. Tool number one is change things up. I'm sure that there are styles that you've never explored before that you've always thought, ah, might be interesting to have a little bit of a go at that Travis picking country thing, or, you know, I've never tried to play Bach before, or, hey, that Joe Pass chord melody, that sounds really interesting, or, what, you know, whatever it is. Even if you're a complete beginner and you're used to playing uh, heavy metal power chords, then maybe have a go at doing folk finger style, or have a go at doing a country picking pattern, or whatever. If it's not a stylistic thing, if you're bored of the styles thing and you've tried lots of different styles, maybe try exploring an effect that you've never used before. I'm sure if you're like me, you've got effects that you maybe haven't explored to their full potential. So grab one out, see what it can do. Just try doing things that are very different. Maybe have a go at playing a different type of guitar or a different way or using a capo that you haven't done before. Slide guitar. There are so many areas in guitar land to explore. Unless you've explored all of them deeply, you're going to have some around that you can do to just change things up and give yourself a fresh perspective and hopefully a breath of fresh air. Tool number two is to refine your goals. Now, I think this is the kind of thing you should be doing even if you're not in a right, if you're still fully in love with the guitar, you should be checking out your goals regularly and refining them, making sure that you're still going in the right direction. You know, if you don't know where you wanna go, you're never gonna get there. It's a really big deal. So spending a little bit of time thinking, right, I'm here and I wanna to get to there. What are the things I need to do to get between here and there, right? I need these tools, you know, to, trying to work your way through that way. I think it can be a really, really great way of staying on track and keeping enthused about what it is that you're gonna be doing. If you feel like you do need a little bit more help with setting your goals and maintaining your enthusiasm, there's a huge module over on my website called Effective Practice. You probably get a lot of benefit from checking that out too. Now, interestingly, over the course of my life, I've fallen out of love with music a few times, not just guitar, the whole thing. Just wasn't even interested in listening to music for a couple of times a month or more. And it's pretty scary as a professional, but luckily there's a tool for that too. Tool number three is to expand your listening palette. Now, what I mean by that is we all resonate with particular types of music. For me, it's you know Neil Young and James Taylor and Elliot Smith, and there's a, a, a bunch of guys that I really, really love until I don't. There have been times I've listened to it and gone like, yeah, it's just not moving me in the same way. And that's pretty scary. Now, I got this little idea from my friend Pete Wittard. And every time he meets someone, he says, what is the one record I should absolutely listen to? And he makes a little note on his phone and when he's got time, he has to listen to it. I've been doing that for a little while now and it's massively increased the breadth of my knowledge of music. Bands that I never would have heard of, some that I always heard of and just never really got into for some reason. But it's a really, really good way of inspiring yourself by finding some new music, some new things to learn, new ideas to learn. Even if you're a creative writery type, by listening to new types of music, you're going to just inspire your musical imagination in a new way. Definitely if you're an improviser, learning some new things, new ideas to improvise with, definitely an amazing part of the adventure. So if you feel in a rut, definitely, definitely try and expand your listening palette. Tool number four is dig deeper. Now, maybe it's that you don't really want to try a new style. You're like, I'm a blues guy. I don't like any other stuff. I want to play blues. I don't want to play country. I don't want to play jazz. I like, this is what I like. So the next thing to do if you're that guy or you don't like the idea of doing other styles or it didn't work for you is to dig a little deeper in the hole you're in. So almost like going through rather than trying to go around. So for example, if you're into blues, you're into Clapton, try and dig a little bit deeper into his history, what he liked. Who did Eric Clapton listen to? 
What, what are the artists that influenced those people? Where did those ideas come from? See if you can absorb maybe a little bit of the history I often find help. So looking at the uh, a particular artist and the history surrounding the people that were their influences, particularly in blues and jazz, that can be really fascinating just to go back a couple of musical generations to see who they were listening to and try and... It's almost like being a bit of a musical detective, you know, trying to say, well, look, here's these T-bone licks appearing in the Chuck Berry songs and here's the Chuck Berry stuff going into the Keith Richards songs. So like tracing it back a little bit, just to give you a sense of perspective, I think it is. It's as much like building a historical framework for the music that you're making. I think it just clarify how we look at it, how we perceive the music. Give us a, it's about reviving our interest in it. So it's not necessarily always about the playing bit. I think playing is important. We'll talk about that more in just a second. But the, sometimes it's the, the whole thing, but developing a, uh, an enthusiasm for music. And I think l reading a little bit of history or watching some of those biogs or the behind the scenes, behind the music kind of videos where the songwriters talking about the songs and hearing those parts separated and whatever it is that you can find that will inspire yourself. But that's definitely a tool you should explore if you've not tried it before. Tool number five is the forced five minutes. Now, I consider myself a pretty busy guy. I've got a young family, I've got lots going on. I'm always, always busy, but I can still find five minutes a day to do whatever. Now, if you can find five minutes a day to practice and force yourself, right, I'm gonna type, put my tone on my phone, five minutes, right, I'm gonna practice and try and do five minutes practice, do whatever you like, do something fun, whatever it is that's flicking your switch that day, that's what you're gonna practice. More often than not, if not on the first day, definitely after the first couple, you'll find yourself playing for longer than five minutes. You'll find something that's exciting. There's a, a great saying, which is the hardest part of practice is getting your bum on the seat. And it is absolutely true. It's still true for me. I get really busy and I'm doing this and doing that, but I really have to go, right, it's time to practice now. And I just do a short practice, but it nearly always turns into a longer practice session. But it's just perceiving it as being right. It's just going to be five minutes. I can find five minutes. You know, make sure you keep your gear set up as well. Don't mean that it's like, okay, I've got five minutes. So where's the guitar out of the closet? Undo it, plug it into the amp. Oh, the amp's not working. You know, plug in the computer. Da -da, and then five minutes is gone, right? Leave, leave your stuff set up. Leave your guitar on a stand, okay? D make it easy to get to as well. That's also an important part of it. But just see if you can give yourself five minutes every day to pick up the guitar and see if you can't make that a habit that grows the passion again. Tool number six is just to take some time out. I've had a couple of times where I've just gone, you know what? It's not working for me. I don't know. I'm going to take like two weeks. And usually I, I find I set a certain amount of time. I go, right, for this amount of time, I'm even going to think about it. I'm not going to push myself. I'm not going to be upset about myself not practicing or not doing anything. Just get away from it. Clear my head. You know, usually I find myself thinking about stuff again, thinking about music again, or, you know, my ear picks up something on the radio. I go, oh, yeah, that kind of could be interesting. Um, I used to take two weeks every year where I used to go mountain climbing in Switzerland and I do absolutely no musical stuff at all unless there happened to be a guitar in a chalet hut or whatever and uh, I might play a bit with the, with the guys I was climbing with. But generally speaking, I wasn't thinking about it at all. It wasn't like I had headphones in, I was listening to the Foo Fighters while I'm slogging up a glacier. You know, that wasn't the deal. It was a, the part of the point of it really was that in doing the mountain climbing and rock climbing and stuff for me, I couldn't really think about music and guitar. It gave me a really good way, a really good break from all of that sort of stuff. So I think sometimes it can be good to deliberately go right in this period I'm not playing not just to fall into not doing it but to give yourself a thing and go between here and here I'm not going to do any guitar I'm not going to think about any music but when I come back I'm going to be right on it so it's a nice way of kind of conserving that energy let the, let the need for the music to build up a little bit and hopefully you'll hit it again hard so look if you're finding yourself in a rut I really hope that this lesson helps you get back into playing guitar do remember over on the website you're going to find tons of lessons on tons of different things and the effective practice here is again really useful if you're in a rut there's a few tips in there as well so look I really hope it helps you on your journey I'll see you for plenty more very soon you all take care of yourselves bye bye